So let's talk a little bit more about velocity and also in a minute acceleration. So we talked about the position of a body. We're also interested in how fast the body moves. So the velocity of a body describes how quickly its position changes. And probably the first way to think about this is just a measure of average velocity, which is just the change in distance over a change in time. So if you have a plot like this one below, where it's very simple, you're just going from x1 to x2 over time, you could say the slope of that line, which is the velocity, is the change in position, x2 minus x1, divided by the change in time, which is t2 minus t1. And that will describe the average velocity. In this case, because the velocity is constant, because the position is linearly changing from x1 to x2, the average velocity is also the instantaneous velocity the whole time. But there might be more complicated position time plots which don't have such a constant instantaneous velocity. And in that case, you would actually have to take the derivative. We're not actually going to be using derivatives in this class, just calculus is not required. Uh, but for those of you that know about it, um, you can think of it as just x dot or dx dt. Acceleration is another important concept, and that just takes the idea of velocity one step further. Because now we're looking at how the acceleration of the body describes how quickly velocity changes over time. So an average acceleration, now instead of being uh, delta x over t, now it's delta v over t. And you can see in this case, which important to note is a, is a plot of velocity versus time, the slope of that line is delta v over delta t, and that gives you a measure of the average acceleration. And again, for this very simple velocity plot, the average acceleration is the same as instantaneous acceleration, but that's not always going to be the case. If you have a function, uh, a velocity function that you could take the derivative of with respect to time, uh, you could actually come up with an instantaneous measure of acceleration. So let's look quickly at how position, velocity, and acceleration are related. So let's say we have this very simple plot of position versus time. So you hold steady, you move to a new position, and then you hold steady again. The velocity plot is going to look like this. Well, when you're holding steady, obviously the velocity is zero. But then the velocity jumps to a constant value because that value is the slope of the position versus time plot. And so you have it jump to this constant value right here. And then when it slows down again, we go back down. And then we hold constant at zero velocity again until the end. Uh, the acceleration for this kind of plot is actually pretty interesting, because what's happening here is we're looking at a measure of how quickly the velocity changes. And in the beginning, the velocity, of course, is not changing. And so it's just at zero. But then the velocity actually instantaneously jumps from one value to another. And so theoretically, that would actually be represented by an infinite acceleration. Now, that's uh, not going to happen in practice. But uh, for these perfect plots, uh, this is actually what you would get from the acceleration. So this arrow is just trying to represent that you have an instantaneous acceleration because your delta v divided by delta t is infinity because the change in time is 0 over which that velocity is changing. And the same thing is happening over here, only now it's a negative <laughs> infinite acceleration because the velocity is dropping. Well, in this class, uh, one of the reasons that we're not too worried about taking derivatives of position and velocity is because we will be working with real physical data that we'll be measuring from the haptic device. So the haptic device, the kit right here, has uh, sensors on it. And so those sensors are things that will allow us to measure the position over time. And so what we'll be doing is we'll be getting data like this. So all those red dots that just showed up are uh, points that have been measured from the sensor on our HAP kit. So we don't really know the continuous position over time. We just know what the position was at the time that we measured it. And in fact, the software that you will write for your HAP kit will try to sample that position at a constant rate. And so there's going to be some delta t at which we will over and over again be measuring the position. And so when we want to compute the velocity from this, it's really just a matter of over and over trying to calculate the average velocity over these little samples. And so you would get a set of velocity measurements that look like this. So this velocity measurement here would actually come from 
taking the change in position there over time. So when you compute velocity in this way, you actually see some interesting things happen. So we're going to take a look at these two points here. So what's happening here, let's say with this point, is that we're taking the average of these two points. And you can't quite see it, but this point here has moved a little bit up that slope. And so what happens is you get a slightly larger velocity than zero that's measured as the average over that previous period. And then similarly, up here, when you measure or you come up with an estimate for the velocity at this point here, that's going to be the difference between these two positions divided by delta t. And because the difference between these two positions is going to be you know, slightly less than the new position, the velocity is actually decreasing there. And then eventually you'll go back to zero. So whenever we are taking data from a physical device, instead of taking a derivative, say of a position function, we're actually just numerically computing the most recent average velocity that we can in order to compute the velocity of the device.